Welcome to a snarky snippet, Daniela Elsa edition. I must admit, dear listeners, this snark is a tad worried about Daniela Elsa, the royal correspondent for News Corp. I think she's onto some sort of strain. No, not the enormous weight of having to justify working for Murdoch or finding endless creative ways to spin the company line, but rather this unhealthy obsession with the end game of the royal family. Oh, that sounds familiar. If you're going to stick the boot in, dear, at least try to be original. Catherine's announcement of her diagnosis caused her to observe that she was, and I quote, a far cry from her usual glammed-up self. What did you want, Miss Elsa, a ball gown on the bench? Anyway, within a few paragraphs, she was on to a doomsday hot take, stating this was a true pivot point in the history of the crown. Uncle Rupert just reached for his popcorn. A day later, she was passing judgment on Prince William for not being by his wife's side, with his trademark concerned listening face. Daniella wanted a different sort of face, a hairy face, presumably, sulky, bored and distracted face, seething, resentful and entitled face, jokey, likeable, banter face, lovelorn, worried, paranoid face, with Catherine clinging on to his arm with a Megan-like claw. Admit it, darling, you just want them back. I understand. They make undermining the monarchy so much easier. Apparently, it was William's responsibility to deliver a powerful rebuttal to the Catherine conspiracy theories spread gleefully by numerous Murdoch platforms. Talk TV, ring a bell? Anyway, she wanted a show. She needed to see the Prince of Wales being supportive and encouraging. It wasn't enough to be told he was. She wanted physical proof. It must be awful not to have an imagination, especially as a writer. Another recent column was devoted to Megan busily signing Polaroids and autographing them for ill children that just looked like they'd rather go back to their room and their iPads. You would think anything would be more fun than a strange middle-aged lady with a weird name. Dutch ass who? This wasn't the desperate act of an ex-actress missing industry promo nights, oh no. This was grandly portrayed by Miss Elsa as reminding us how abnormal, ridiculous and artificially constrained the royal family were. Well, a bit of an hysterical leap there. That spin made me positively giddy. But I'll hold on and try to explain. Apparently, Catherine was once asked for her autograph, and she drew a picture for the child who requested it, instead stating it wasn't the darn thing for royals to sign things. Understandable, they didn't want to cause a flurry on eBay, although I can see that attraction for Meghan. But it doesn't stop there. Phrases such as repressive regime, comparisons with the stoning of women. Gosh, we are still talking about Rachel's photo op, aren't we? Yes, we are, Daniela screams. I have more to say about this. The palace is then called creaky, mouldy, fogeyish. OK, dear listeners, I want you all to keep your eyes on Daniela and slowly walk backwards to the door. No sudden movements. Careful, careful. Oh, no, she's starting again. It's royal captivity now. And, uh, oh, suddenly it all makes sense. I've just got to the Megan paragraph to wrap it all up in a fetching, messy bun. Apparently being able to sign her name and press it into reluctant hands means she's free. Her spirit no longer strangled by the evil royal family. Hang on. You're right, Daniela. I see the light. Megan is free, free, I tell you. Free to wear ball gowns to the cinema. Free to launch businesses that haven't been created yet. Free to arrange backward pap walks in any car park she likes. And after all that delicious freedom, she gets to go home to Harry. Oh. Anyway, she can pop into an in-nap burger and get a shake on the way. Bye.